Good evening, Homes Road Church of Christ. Welcome. We're glad you could join us here in this Sunday evening together as we continue to look through the book of Titus together. Tonight we're in the final chapter. We start the last chapter of Titus chapter 3, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 8 tonight. But just a quick review, since we haven't we haven't actually gotten together the last couple of weeks. Uh, one, because of the VBS, and then also because I came down COVID last week. So we've missed a couple of weeks, so we probably need a quick refresher. But as we look through chapter 2, we had saw where Paul wrote that great section on grace in chapter 2. He spent a long time talking about the grace of Jesus and the grace that God has to offer us. So having covered that power of grace back in chapter 2, now Paul into chapter 3 kind of ends, like I said, this is the final chapter, so he kind of ends this uh, whole letter here by giving some reminders. Because of uh, grace, he wants us to remember several things. And that's what chapter 3 is going about. He's, he's going to say, you need to remember to do this because of grace. In light of the grace that Jesus has given us from chapter 2, now you need to remember these things. And that's what uh, chapter 3 is going to be about. And today we're going to look at some of those things that he wants us to remember in the light of grace, the, 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 we're going to cover just a few things, and we'll continue to cover more of them in the future weeks to come. But right now, uh, we're just going to start at verses 1 through 8. we we'll start at the verses 1 through 2 together. Let's look here. Paul writes, Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do what is good, to slander no one, <clears throat> to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle toward everyone. So like I said, this whole chapter 3 is about remind. Remember to tell the people to do this. And so the first thing he says is remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities. And this word remind, he's going to use it a lot as we go through this chapter. And, and every single time this word remind is used, the tense of it is in the act of present. And why that's important is because it tells us something about uh, what the what is really meant here? It, what Paul is trying to say here in in using that tense is never stop reminding. He could have said you need to continue to remind people forever, or he could have said constantly be reminding people over and over again that they should be in submission to authority. In other words, what he's saying here you can never remind someone enough to submit unto rulers and authorities. That's why the, pre, the the tense of that word is so important to understand because he, he's saying never stop reminding people that they should be in submission to rulers and authorities. Now you may say, Stan, that can kind of get annoying. I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, I've, I've been in situations where someone just constantly reminds me to do something over and over. And it, after a while, it starts to feel like nagging. It starts to feel like, okay, I've got it. Leave me alone, right? But that's what Paul wants uh, Titus to do here is to remind the Cretans that they should be subject to rulers and authorities over and over, constantly reminding them of this. And that's because it kind of tells us a little bit about the Cretans themselves. We know that the Cretans have had, uh, you know, they have a certain difficult character about them. They, uh, they're known to be party animals. They're known to be rebels. They're known to buck the system and to go against the authority. And so this was especially something that was kind of challenging for these particular people to accept. And that's a challenging command for the Cretans to hear and to say, okay, yes, I will do that now because I'm a Christian. They were raised in such a culture that you, you did not bow down to the government. You would challenge their authority. And so here now being a Christian, you know, we're supposed to respect the authority and submit unto the authority. And so that's what... Uh, he's saying he's, you need to remind the Cretans to do so. I think it's interesting that in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 1 through 3, we've read about this before where we're supposed to be subject to our government. And then in this particular passage in Timothy, we're told to pray for the authorities. Remember, pray for those who are in, who are in charge. And that's what Timothy is. Uh, Paul tells Timothy to do for his people there in Ephesus. But he doesn't mention that here. He simply just wants obedience. For the Cretans in their spiritual walk, for where they are spiritually, just being obedient to this, just trying to learn to, 
to be submissive to the government authorities and to the authorities that are, that are in charge. That alone is kind of the first step. You know, praying for the authorities, that's a that's sort of a second step maturity level, right? That's a, that that's somewhere after obedience and and that's kind of where the Cretans are. They need to master the obedience first. We'll worry about praying for the authorities here in a little bit. The Cretans were just not ready to hear pray for the authorities. Let's learn to be obedient and subject to them first. And I think that's a real interesting thing here. Then Paul is saying, remind them, remind the Cretans that they are supposed to be subject to the authority. Really challenging for that particular group of people. But the second thing that Paul mentions here is not just being subject to authorities, which is the first one, but then he says the second one is remind them to do good. As Christian people, not only are we supposed to be subject to the authorities and subject to the government and the rulers, but we're also supposed to be people who do good. The Christian life is not just a passive subjection. We don't just uh, we, we don't just sit there and say, oh, OK, well, we're in subject to authority and then just do what we're told all the time. No, we actually work to make things better. We are actively called to work and to serve the people around us and make things even better than they are. While being in subjection to our government, while giving into authorities and following their laws and following their rules, not only are we supposed to be doing that, we're supposed to be actively working to make our situation on earth better as we're in subject to the authorities. Now, how do we do that? Well, he makes a little list here. What are some of the things we can do, actively do, not passively sit by, but actively do to make things better? Well, he gives a little list here. For example, he says, don't slander anybody. That's a good work. If you're not slandering people and you're just building people up, that's a good work. If you're being peaceable and making peace and, and being a peacemaker, then that's an active work that you can be doing to make things better around you. Being kind, being gentle, showing humility. All these things are active works that you can be doing to make your world better around you. It's a very short, small, little, powerful list but I think it's good for us to look at that and say, is that something I'm doing? Is that something I'm actively doing in my world and with the people I'm around? Am I doing those things to make my world better around me? Am I participating in these good works? Let's now look at verse 3 together. Paul writes here in verse 3, At one time we were too foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures, we lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. So Paul here has said, I want you to remind the people to be in subject to the authorities. Remind them to do good works. And now he said, remind them to remember from whence they came, where they used to be. All Christian people were in the same basket at one time. We were all once fallen, lost, and people who were in need of salvation. We all were in, in the spot of needing to be rescued. I think so many times uh, people who have been Christians, especially a long time, will look at worldly people and say, oh, that's just so horrible what they're doing. Well, we got to remember, we used to do that too. We used to be there. And so we need to be careful about judging where people are at because we were once in that same position. And that's what Paul is reminding Titus to do. I want you to remind the Cretans that they need to remember where they used to be. They used to be people who were full of hate. They used to be people who were full of malice, full of envy, and enslaved by all kinds of worldly lusts. That is where all of us used to be. And so why does Paul want Titus to even remember these? Why, why is Paul saying, Titus, remind people to remember where they used to be? How is that helpful? Well, it's helpful in several ways. In fact, remembering that we were once in that lost state, it helps to develop four things in us. There's really four things that come out of this exercise of remembering who we used to be. The first one is it helps us to have gratitude. It helps us to be thankful for God because we remember how God has changed us how we have been metamorphosed, how we have been transformed 
by the renewing of the Spirit. Jesus came, we gave our life to Jesus in baptism. He gave us the Holy Spirit. And as a result, we have been a changed person. We're no longer the, those people who are full of hate and full of envy and controlled by our earthly lust. With those things, that, that has changed for us. And so, so that's the first thing it does. It gives us a sense of gratitude. We praise God for the way he has changed us and made us a better person. Secondly, it gives us a sense of humility because we understand the only reason we've been changed is by the grace of God. We didn't have the power to change ourselves. We didn't have the power to defeat all those things ourselves. We had to have Christ. We had to have an example of Jesus. We had to have his power. We had to have his spirit in order to be able to change and be transformed. So we, we have that sense of humility. We don't think of ourselves better than others because we were just like them. And the only reason we're not like them now is because of Jesus Christ, not because of any efforts of our own. And thirdly, we it develops in this, this sense of kindness, a sense of gentleness with other people, acceptance of where they're at, because we understand that God was kind to us God accepted us in all of our sin and all of our filth and dirtiness. God accepted us and allowed us to come to him. Then we should be the same for other people. We should love them and accept them. We should love them where they're at, even though they're doing horrible things. God loved us when we were still in that condition. And so it helps us to be kind. We, we, we don't treat homeless people bad. We don't treat the poor bad. We don't treat anybody bad. We certainly don't treat sinners or people who are lost badly or shun them because that's not what Jesus did to us. And so it teaches us that sense of kindness and acceptance. And the fourth thing it, the fourth thing it does is it builds our faith. It develops our faith in the fact that God can change those who are currently in that place of lost. That place where I used to be, that place where I needed rescue. We know we can look at somebody and say, we know how bad of a sinner they are. We know where they're at currently, but we have hope that they can change because God changed me. He can do that for them too. God changed Paul, a mass murderer. He can change this person too. It gives us faith knowing that God has the ability and can change people's situations. So simply remembering where we used to be really develops us in these four ways. And that's why Paul is, is, is telling Titus, remind people to remember where they came from. Let's look at verses 4 through 8. Paul writes to Titus in verses 4 through 8 as we finish out this section. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. So, so far, uh, Paul has written Titus and said, I want you to remind people to be in subject to governing authorities. I want you to remind people to do good works. I want you to remind people to remember where they came. And now in this section, verses 4 through 8, he's saying, I want you to remember God's salvation. Remind people to remember God, the power of God's salvation. The only reason that we have been saved, the only reason that we are where we are, we have the hope and love that we have now is because of Jesus Christ. We didn't have the ability to save ourselves. We could not take care of our sin situation ourselves. We needed Jesus. We were rescued through the love and the mercy and the kindness of God, and we accessed that through baptism. And that's what is talked about here there in verse five, when he said, talks about the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, that is baptism. And so Paul is telling Titus, help people to re remind them to remember that they have been saved through baptism. If you have been accepted the merciful gift 
that is being saved through baptism, then, what does he say? You should devote yourselves. In verse 8 there, be careful, devote themselves to doing what is good. If you've accepted the wonderful gift that is the body of Christ, and you can only get that through baptism, then if you are a Christian who's accepted that and been baptized for the free of your sins to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, then you should devote yourselves to doing good works. That is so important because I, I know too many people look at doing good things as a way to earn your way to heaven in some way. Like the more I do, the more God's happy with me or something of that nature. No, it has nothing to do with that. We serve others and we do good works because we've been saved. That is, that is why we do it. Because we're a member of the saved, because we're a member of the 144,000, we have been chosen. We are in the blood of Christ and we are going to heaven. And so therefore, it, because of that gift that I did not earn, I should then serve God for the rest of my life and be devoted to doing good works for him. We don't do good works to be saved. We cannot earn our way to heaven. We do the good works because we are saved. And that's what he's saying. Remind people of this. Remind people that when you do a service for God, it's because you are thankful for his salvation, not to try to gain some new jewel in your crown. Doing good works is, a, is an afterthought of salvation. When you've been saved, then, it, then you should be devoted to doing good works. The theology of Christianity is based on grace. It's not based on doing good things. The theology of Christianity is based on grace. He gave us salvation when we didn't deserve it. It's a free gift, and we have to submit ourselves unto repentance and confession and baptism and a life of faith. And then we are given the grace of salvation. Now, the ethics of Christianity is based in gratitude. In other words, because we're so thankful for salvation, now I'm going to go out and I'm going to serve my neighbors. Now, because I've been saved, I'm going to think of others more highly than myself. Now, because Jesus has saved me, I'm going to consider others' needs as more important than my own needs. That's the point of Christianity, and that's what uh, Titus is being reminded by Paul to do. Tell the Cretans this is what they're supposed to be doing. And so I just want to end this lesson by saying, is this you? Is this your practice? Is this what you are doing on a daily basis? Holmes Road uh, Christians, the Churches of Christ here in Lansing, Michigan, are you serving others? Are you devoting yourselves daily to doing good works because you are saved? Not to try to earn some way, earn favor of God or anything. No, because we're already saved people, that's why we're serving others. Is that your life? Do you wake up every morning and say, what can I do good today for someone else? And the reason I ask that question is because I am a saved member of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ gave me the grace of allowing me to be in his family when I didn't deserve it. And so because of that, I'm going to serve others. That is the lesson for you this evening to re, as a reminder that we're to be living differently, that we're to live holy. And so I hope that has been beneficial for you. Let's go to God and pray as we conclude this lesson. Father in heaven, we come before you and we want to thank you so much for the grace of salvation, for the gift of of loving us when we didn't deserve it, for accepting us when we didn't deserve it, for, in, for allowing us to be in the body of Christ when we couldn't have done it ourselves, when we had no way to take care of our sin problem. We thank you for giving us Jesus. And we ask that all of us who've heard this lesson today will be, we will be more devoted every day to serving others and to doing good works because of your salvation. And we ask your help in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, Holmes Road, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.